Hi, my name is Craig and I'm going to walk you through the assembly of the VESA mount bracket for the GP3. Um, this bracket mounts the GP3 to a display and that makes it, uh, uh, actually it really uh, improves the performance of the system in that when you, you know, if you bump the screen or you bump anything, the calibrations uh, stay fixed. The calibration is between the, the tracker and the display um, and so it really um, sort of stabilizes the system over a floating tripod. Um, and the nice thing also, instead of just sort of gluing the unit to the screen like some of the other systems, um, there's actually a pivot point, so you can actually tilt the unit up and down depending on the subject's height. You don't need them to use their chair to move up and down. So it was really useful, uh, really useful accessory. Um, the setup just requires uh, basically two steps. We need to mount the uh, arms to the bracket and then the bracket to the display. Now. Computer displays have two standard brackets. There's a, um, a VESA mount that's a 100 millimeter spacing and a bracket that's a 75 millimeter spacing. And our bracket will work for both of those types of displays. Um, all you have to do is rotate the um, little arms here upside down for one display or the other. So, and uh, we've got some text on each one of them that describe uh, exactly what you're supposed to do. Uh, in this case, we can see here it says right front and left front. So from the front, this goes on the right side, and from the front, this goes on the left side. Um, and then we're going to basically attach these arms, and again, there's some text on it that says if you have 100 millimeter spacings, uh, which one is the right and which one is the left. So let's just take these screws out here. They're Phillips uh, screws. We're just going to drop them through the arms. Little electric screwdriver here. So that's the one arm is finished and you can see that the, the thumb screw uh, that will mount onto the best amount hinge is there uh, and so that's going to mount there. Take the other guy, drop this through and again you can look at the text and if it's a hundred millimeter spacing it says which one is the, is the right and the left. If you get it wrong, it's not, it's not the end of the world, you just um, take them back off and flip them around. Okay, well, that's it. That's the entire uh, assembly of the units. Uh, and like I say, if you get it wrong, the only thing that will happen is that the, the hinges won't, won't have the correct spacing. Um, so again, not the end of the world, you just pop these off and flip them upside down. Uh, to mount it to the display, you just take one of these sun screws, uh, drop it through. You might have to try a couple of different hole spacings, that's why we have so many different spacings here. Uh, and that lets you kind of adjust it up and down depending on the size of your display. And so we'll drop this one in here. And in here. And so now we've mounted one. Uh, you might find that some of your cables uh, run into these, just kind of move them, shift them around so you've got the, the right spot. Uh, and then you can count the number of holes to, to make sure you match it, same on the other side. This guy, and then look through to find the hole. And that's it, so just the four screws at the bottom here, and then four thumb screws, and now the unit is uh, basically all assembled. Uh, we'll just rotate it around. Uh, attaching it uh, to the GP3, you just take these thumb screws out, and all these thumb screws are interchangeable, uh, so it doesn't matter which one's which. You see there's um, two little pivots here, uh, those will just fit into the, the hinge, like that, and then you just run a thumb screw uh, through, put that in, and screw it in, and then run one through on the other side as well. Screw that in, Oops. and that's it. We've got the unit assembled, and again, you can now manipulate the GP3 up and down for varying subject heights uh, without having to actually twist the whole screen around. Uh, and if someone does actually bump the screen, uh, the calibration is still there. You just need to manipulate the, the whole assembly to get the user back in the field of view. And that's pretty much all there is to it.